Welcome back. Today we are doing it. We are officially starting the process on making over the dining nook in my house. At this point, I am just genuinely so excited to work on every single space in this home that I can't decide, so I'm, I'm letting necessity choose for me at this point. I am having family come for a big family dinner in two weeks time, and I kind of realized I don't really have a proper place for people to sit up and have like a meal at a table that's not like the island bar. I mean, I do, but it's really bad. So let's talk about it. Welcome back to the series where I challenge myself to use thrifted materials and a love of all things retro to DIY our family home from this farmhouse to that 70s house. And thank you so much to Lark for sponsoring a portion of today's video. So let's talk about what's not working in the current dining nook area. I have this glass and wood table that came from my old house, which I have to admit is a stunning table. It's beautiful, but proportionately, I feel like it just doesn't work in this area. This area is shaped more like a square and this table is long and skinny. And I don't know, something about the proportion is just feeling super off for me in here. Quite obviously, the chair selection is just bad. We have one bench that's aesthetically nice, but not the nicest to sit at and then two chairs that are just all around bad. And the pendant light, which hangs above, is just plain and a little sad and not exciting me in the ways that I want a pendant light to. So one feature about mid-century homes that I really love and want to implement more into this house is the idea of built-in furniture and built-in designs. Designs that feel like they really are a part of the house and a part of the walls almost, like, a, like they're structural features of the home. If you saw the video where I toured abandoned mid-century mansions, <laughs> and if you haven't, I highly recommend it. The lot of the things I was seeing in those homes are built-in features of the homes. And that is essentially the direction that I want to take this dining nook in. Instead of having just a freestanding table and chairs, I want to do something that feels like it's meant to fit in this very defined corner of the kitchen. So think like kind of dining booth-esque. Here's kind of the inspo pictures I'm going with at the moment. If my words aren't explaining my thought well enough, Hopefully these do. This is kind of where we're headed. So a good place to start with most makeovers is by just cleaning out the space of anything that's not staying and cleaning up the space, which for me, that means painting these kind of grayish blue walls a nice bright white. This paintbrush and roller has been in my fridge for like three weeks. Let's see if it still works or if it's totally dry. <gasps> does that's a, that's amazing that is amazing what a hack I've really been trying to do better at my trim or edge painting skills so that I can avoid using painters tape when I don't need to because after you're done I just end up throwing out like feet and feet of tape and that doesn't feel very good. <laughs> but an easy place to start is with trim. I find that trim is easy because you can kind of get your brush up against the edge and it helps keep it straight. And especially top trim like this because even if you do mess up a little bit, no one's gonna see it. Does it not look amazing in here already? It's so much brighter. And the really good thing is that I was strongly considering having to stain all this wood like a slightly darker color to match the ceilings. But I think because the white is so bright, it upped the contrast between the two and it looks a little bit darker of a wood now. And I like it. I don't think I have to touch it, which is good. It saves me so much work. <laughs> so now we are ready to talk about what I'm gonna do for this dining bench that I have in mind. So while I totally could build a custom bench from the ground up and have seat cushions made to be like bench seats, I really have this vision of using a thrifted retro couch for my bench seating. Couches are so comfortable and there's just so many old couches on Marketplace that are dying to be loved and not thrown out and I think I, I'm here to be their, their savior with this project. 
So let's talk about the must-haves for this sofa before I dive into searching. So because of the size of the space and because I want it to look like it's a built-in, I think we have to go with an L shape or even a U shape if we can. Something that's really important to me is that there are backrests on all of the pieces of the sofa. I know a lot of times with L-shaped sectionals, you get backrests on one part and then the rest is just like a leg extension. I think that's really a dead giveaway that this is a couch. And even, even though it is a couch, I'm trying to make it look like it's a bench seat. So backrests all around. And because it's me and of the space it's going in, it absolutely has to have some funky retro element to it, whether it be the color or the fabric used. There's gotta be something cool about this. And lastly, I would love if this could be under a thousand dollars because I'm just trying to do this whole thing on a budget, okay? So, with that in mind, let's get to looking. Starting off strong, this is exactly what I would go for. It's cool, it's retro, you can make it an L shape, but it's $2,500. I'm gonna keep looking. Oh, that breaks my heart. Don't break my heart, my thrifty, thrifty heart. I just don't think I can pay $2,500. <laughs> See, it's gotta have the backrests. This just won't do. What's this? Well, let me tell you about my Lark water filter. If you are anything like me and know it's important to try and stay super hydrated throughout the day, then you know that filtered water is also super important. I have actually tried quite a few water filters since moving into this house since we are on well water and the Lark filter has by far been my favorite. So Lark sent me their water pitcher, the Pure Viz, which is an advanced water pitcher with a two-step filtration and purification. I love that it literally takes seconds to purify and sanitize the water with this filter. That was some of the problems I was having with other ones that it just takes a long time for the water to actually filter through. Their plant-based carbon derived filter is effective against a whole bunch of pollutants found to contaminate normal tap water. So think lead, chlorine, PFAs, pesticides, copper, benzene, and mercury. All things that I do not want in my water, no thank you. The UVC LED technology purifies your water both on refill and every six hours to prevent bacterial and biocontaminant growth inside the pitcher. And this water tastes amazing. I guess what I mean is that it doesn't taste like anything, which is what you want. Like this water is giving me nothing, which means that this water filter is giving me everything. <laughs> Does that make sense? Oh, it's just so clean and like, tasteless, but so hydrating. <laughs> it even comes with the accompanying Lark app, which tells you how much water is being filtered through, what your household water consumption is, and exactly when the filter needs to be replaced. If you wanna learn more about Lark, check them out at the link below. Okay, I still have searching to do. I have not yet found the perfect sofa, unfortunately. I'm kind of getting the thought that this might be a multi-day search process. $225 though, but she's slouchy. <sighs> so I kept looking for secondhand sofas. I messaged many people. I considered a ton of different options and I was honestly starting to think that my ask was too specific and I might have to reevaluate my checklist. That was all until good morning. Okay. It's very early in the morning and I am off to go pick up a sofa. <laughs> I found one literally just on the weekend. It's Monday morning now and I was like, I'm coming because we'll talk about the checklist later, but I think it crosses all of the boxes. Okay. <laughs> we got a couch, guys. <laughs> okay, um, I'm gonna join the morning call because I'm out and about. You know what's also amazing? I was speaking to the owner and she said this couch is actually from the 70s. It was in her grandparents' house, which they moved into in the 60s, and like no one's really used it much. It has 
zero smell to it. <laughs> Which I just can't believe for a couch that old. Like I've been driving with this thing for like half an hour now and I can't smell it. I know this sounds weird, but like it's something you have to consider when buying old furniture and it's something you can't really know through a photo until you go see it. And I'm very impressed so far. Very impressed. Hello. Hi Becky. You guys wanna see what I just picked up? Well, I don't know if you can see it, but. Oh my God, it's a couch. Nice, that's awesome. 50 bucks? What? <laughs> oh my God. I can't get more shocked than price. That is so fitting. What the <laughs> hell? Good condition? Yeah, it is. <laughs> That's so funny. I know. Are you guys ready to see it? Are we not obsessed? This couch is so perfect. And it all came together last minute after like, I think almost two weeks of searching every single day and messaging a million people. Here we are, I found this literally last night and said, I'm coming, please hold it. I will be there as soon as I wake up in the morning <laughs> because it was exactly what I was looking for. Let's remember the checklist. So this is an L-shaped sofa. It fits so nicely in this corner. It has back cushions on all sides of it, which definitely makes it feel a bit more benchy, which was the goal. It, of course, is very retro in style. It's this perfect concoction of orange and brown and cream in stripes. And it's like a soft kind of velvet fabric. <laughs> it's so good. And I think what makes this just the best out of all of those things combined is that this sofa was $50. I said, I don't even, I'm not even asking questions, I'm showing up because for $50, it's worth it for me to find out if this is gonna work. And I think it is gonna work. It's beautiful. <laughs> and the sofa is made by a company called House of Braymore. I have never heard of them, but I'm curious if anyone watching this knows anything about this company because I would love to learn more. It says the company is from Toronto, Canada, which is also very cool. We love that. So this could not be more perfect, except for the fact that we have one teensy problem. And that is the fact that this couch is not chair height. It doesn't look that far off, but what you don't realize is this couch has a ton of squish. Like you really go down when you sit in it. So I'm probably sitting at about 10 inches off the ground here. And this, which I'm using as my general chair height measurement is 18 inches. So I need to find a way to raise this whole sofa about 10 inches off the ground so it will work with a standard dining table height. That might need to be tomorrow's project. So my plan to raise this sofa up is by building one giant L-shaped box that's the same size as the sofa and can go underneath and then the couch just sits on that so it's taller. Oh, <laughs> I have two pencils. I'm so prepared. I'm using some pieces of one by eight inexpensive pine, which is just slightly lower than the eight inches I was hoping for, but that's okay. It beats cutting down wood to the exact size. I'm chopping all of my lengths and then I added pocket holes into all of them so that I can screw it together easily once it's inside. This is recording, Austin. <laughs> This looks small. Do you think this is the size of that couch? I don't know, I didn't design it. <laughs> it has to be right. Once the outside frame of this was built, I then cut some cross supports that I can just slide on in the middle. That's gonna create a nice base that I can then put some big sheets of plywood on for this whole sofa to sit on top of. Feels pretty good. All right, here's how it looks. This took me literally all day and it's basically gonna be something you hopefully won't even notice, but had to be done and I think it's sturdy and that's what matters the most. And I know that I'll wanna stain this to match the rest of the wood, but I just have to know if this fits. Oh my gosh, 
It looks really good. Oh. Okay, that was enough work for today. Yeah, this feels good. <laughs> I have been working on this for too long. I'm officially, I'm over it. Alright, oh, it's been a few days and I've gotten this stained, turned out a little bit more orange than I was hoping, but we're not going to talk about that. <laughs> um, I really wanted to just live with this in this space, look at it, see how I'm liking it before deciding what my next move is going to be, and I think I have come up with a thought. One of my original thoughts when couch hunting was to find a U-shaped couch which would take up every single wall in this nook and leave only space for a table here but since i didn't find that i have this l shape i actually think there's room for some chairs now because if you're sitting here and you have your nice table whatever that ends up being you kind of want to have someone across from you and i think we do have the space we could do a chair kind of here or we could do a chair over here we got room for chairs <laughs> I'm heading up today to Austin's Cottage to spend a couple days there and I actually think that there might be something there that will help us out with this, but I'm not sure because I haven't seen the things in a while, but I'm excited to find out, so more information once we get there. Okay, at um, Austin's parents' cottage, there's been these chairs that have always been sitting outside and I've known about them, but never like had a spot to use them for anything. And I always told his mom she should sell them because they're probably worth something, but they're here <laughs> covered in snow. And maybe there's a world I can revive them for this project because they would be free. These are the chairs. I brought them back to my place to work on and I really don't know much at all about these chairs, like where they're originally from, how old they are even. Um, but the one thing I know for pretty certain is that they are fiberglass and fiberglass can be pretty tricky if not a little bit dangerous to actually work with. So I'm probably not gonna do as much deep restorative repair to these chairs as someone might who's really trying to bring them back to like original. They've got quite a few cracks and they are definitely dirty. So we're gonna try and do a little bit of cleaning, a little bit of patch repair. And then I think just a good coat of new paint is really gonna save these. But let's start by giving them a good cleanup so we can really know what we're working with here. It is so cold outside. So I am very quickly realizing two things. Uh, one, it probably makes way more sense for me to just take these chairs to my studio where I can work on them inside a little bit better. And two, looks like we're already 18 minutes into the video and if you're following along and you've made it this far, you're probably enjoying it. Or maybe you're just invested to see if this couch is actually gonna look any good in the end. Either way, if you haven't yet subscribed to this channel, please take a second to do so. A huge amount of our viewers actually don't subscribe to our channel, but still enjoy the content and maybe that's you. I feel like this is gonna be a two-part video because there's so much I wanna get to and I feel like the ending is gonna look so freaking cool and I just want you guys there see how it all comes together and you won't be notified if you aren't subscribed and I've hit that notification bell. All right, you've done that, great. Okay, I'm gonna see you at the office. We're gonna keep working on these chairs, bye. So there were many methods that I could use to tackle these cracks in the chairs, but today I'm gonna try out this two-part epoxy that comes in this putty format. It has puttied itself in there. Okay, I'll get that out. 
It's the consistency of Play-Doh and you kind of mix it around until the two colors fully mix and the putty will start to heat up and basically cure so you have to work fast. The reason I thought this would be good for this particular job is that there are actually some parts of the chair where whole chunks had cracked off and I can use this putty to build back up those areas. This is something that I wouldn't be able to do if I was using a traditional liquid glue or liquid epoxy. Once the putty has fully cured, you can definitely sand this stuff, so I'm taking some rough grit sandpaper and sanding it down to make all the new pieces flush with the rest of the chair. And make sure to wear a mask when doing this, especially if your chair is fiberglass like mine is, you don't wanna breathe that in. I'm then using a spray paint and primer in one to paint the chairs white, and then once that was dry, I'm sealing it all with a nice glossy spray top coat. It's important that you're spray painting in a well-ventilated area. I kept opening these big garage doors behind me in between coats. So this is how the chairs are looking in their new home and I have to say they look amazing. The shape of them is just the perfect addition to this space. This is very angular and like L shape and this is kind of more fun and organic. So together I think they look so good. And can we also appreciate just how well the spray paint took to this? Like it looks so flawless. I don't know if you guys remember how rough this looked before, but there was cracks, there was dirt, there was grime, and the finish of this is just so gorgeous. And you'll actually be seeing these chairs most of the time, probably from the behind, just because they'll be with the table. Um, and the backs look great too. There is a little bit of texture here, but that's just like due to the nature of the chair being fiberglass. But the paint job is so even, so this, this is okay with me. These chairs are actually pretty comfortable on their own, but I did pick up some fabric that I think matches the couch actually really well. And I'm gonna sew two little simple seat cushions. Not only will it make these the tiniest bit more comfortable, but it will also just make it seem like these chairs and the sofa are very much from the same world and like almost like a set, you know? I roughed out the shape that I thought looked right for the seat and then cut out two of these shapes per cushion. I sewed all the way around with the good sides facing in, but I made sure to leave like a large gap at the back so that I can easily flip this whole seat cushion inside out once it's been sewed. Then I cut this same shape out of some one inch foam and then I added that inside the cover. And that gap that I left was really easy to just sew up with a hand stitch needle and thread. Seat cushions are done. Let's take a look at how far we've come This place is already looking amazing. The vibes are all coming together. It's all lining up and I can see the vision of where we're gonna go from here, which brings me to what we still have to do. We're missing a table, so obviously that's gonna come next. And this pendant light, I don't wanna go another day looking at it. We need something new, something fun, something funky, something fresh. Woo! <laughs> Willing all of that into existence up next. So make sure you're subscribed with notification bell turned on so you know exactly when part two is out. It's coming very soon, but I still don't want you to miss it. And as always, I wanna hear your thoughts below. How are you liking this makeover so far? What should I do in part two? What do I need to add, remove, delete, edit? I don't know. Tell me your thoughts about this couch. I feel like it's controversial. We, we're either gonna love it or we hate it, but I'm, I'm ready to hear it, give it to me. <laughs> all right, see you in the comments and see you next time. Bye. In the meantime, to tide you over, I strongly recommend that you check out this retro room makeover I did, which also involved thrifting another funky chair, as well as DIYing a giant wall shelf and an easy upcycle that I did on my IKEA drawer units. See you there. These were amazing steals, by the way. $15 I got this pendant for.